Hey, hey, SolidWorks users, and happy 4th of July. Welcome back to our three-part series where we are hacking an off-the-shelf model rocket kit and making it our own with a retro design nose cone and tailpiece. We have our tailpiece started, so I'm going to create some small internal spines which hold the rocket engine in tight. And I'll just sketch a simple rectangle that's snapped to the internal face of the part and fully constrain it with some dimensions. Now enter the revolve tool, select the center line, and we'll just do a partial mid-plane revolve at 6.5 degrees. And now before we do a circular pattern of this spine, let's blend it into the part using several fillets. Now head to the drop down under Linear Pattern and select Circular Pattern again. We'll select one of these circular edges to pattern around, and we can select more than one feature to pattern all at once. I don't want this many spines, so I'll just change my instance count to three, and there is our pattern spine. So let's model in our first fin, which we will pattern three times. We're going to create the fin using a boundary that conforms to the outer face of the tailpiece. So let's sketch on the front plane. And I'm just going to sketch an airfoil shape. And here's a handy way to model an airfoil. I'll first draw three equal center lines, dimensioning the combined length of these lines. And then I'll use the spline tool to sketch a spline with three points, making sure the bottom point is horizontal to the bottom point of the center line, the center point is horizontal to the top center point of the center line, and the top point is coincident with the top point of the center line. I'll draw in our bottom connecting line to give the edge of this fin some thickness, and I'll adjust the spline. Keep in mind that you can set relations as well as length and angle dimensions to spline handles. Now that I'm happy with this shape, I'll just mirror these lines across the center line. And here's the root profile of our fin, which I'm going to project to the outer surfaces of the tailpiece using the Project Curve tool, found under Curves in the Command Manager here. With the Sketch on Faces type selected, make sure your sketch is selected and then select the faces you'd like to project the sketch onto. If needed, you can reverse the direction of the projection, but in this case, we look good. Now let's sketch the side outlines of the fin on the right plane using the line tool. We will use this vertical line to create a construction plane for our other airfoil profile, so let's convert that to a construction line. With this sketch, I just want to make sure my lines intersect our projected sketch, so I'm going to set a pierce relation to these.
and I'll dimension everything to constrain the sketch. Exit the sketch, select just the vertical construction line we sketched at the tip of the fin, and navigate to Reference Geometry, Plane, and we'll make this new plane perpendicular to the right plane. So we'll sketch a shorter airfoil shape on this new plane. I'm just making sure this sketch is snapped to the guide curves we drew and I'll hide our tailpiece body and visible sketches to make this easier to see. Now dimension the thickness of this airfoil to match our larger root airfoil. After exiting the sketch, I'll unhide the fin path sketch and the tailpiece and navigate to the boundary boss slash base tool in the command manager. Once in the tool, first select the projected curve, then the tip airfoil sketch. To select the side profile lines individually, right click in the purple box under direction 2 and click on selection manager. This will allow you to select individual entities contained in a single sketch. So we'll do that for both of our side profile lines. I don't want to merge this fin to the main body just yet, so I'll ensure Merge Result and Merge Tangent Faces are unselected. And there is our boundaried fin shape. Now let's add that retro fin tip using the Revolve tool. I'll sketch on the right plane and sketch the profile of the fin tip, making sure the axis of revolution is collinear with the edge of the fin. Exit the sketch and we'll do a simple revolved boss 360 degrees. Again I want to make sure the merge results option is unselected as I'm going to be shelling this tip shape to shed some weight from our rocket. You'll find the shell tool here in the command manager. In this tool simply type in the dimension for the wall thickness of the shell and select the faces you'd like to remove. You have the option to show or hide the preview just as with all other feature tools. Now with our shell complete, we can use the combine tool to combine the tip to the fin shape. So to remove this portion of the fin that juts into the shelled tip, we could have used the same sketch from our revolved tip to do a revolved cut on the fin shape prior to the combine. But I'll show you another option using the delete face tool, which is found in the surfaces tab of the command manager. With the Delete and Patch option selected, we'll just select these faces to remove, and SolidWorks automatically deletes them and cleanly blends the result.
Now we're ready to do a circular pattern of this fin around one of our circular edges three times around 360 degrees. And I'll go ahead and blend all of these connecting edges with a one millimeter fillet. To wrap up the design of the tailpiece, I'm going to add the rivet detail the same way I did with the nose cone. If you need a refresher on that, just head back to part one of this series. I'm going to be painting my physical model with aluminum spray paint, so I'll go ahead and add that appearance to this SolidWorks model just to help visualize the look. So there is our final retro rocket design. We're ready to export our parts for printing and to get this bad boy assembled. Stay tuned for the final part of the series where we will export our parts for printing, run through a time lapse of the print, and we'll get our rocket flight worthy. Will it fly? Stay tuned to find out.